Welcome to the Prayer Motivator devotional broadcast with Daniel White III. We are glad that you have joined us as Daniel White III motivates us and encourages us to simply just pray for the glory of God. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in over 25 foreign countries. He is the president of Gospel Light Society and Torch Ministries International. Now here's your host, Daniel White III. Welcome to another prayer motivator devotional broadcast. This is broadcast number 335. As always, it is absolutely wonderful to be with you today to encourage you to pray. Today, by the grace of God, I would like to begin by sharing with you a poem titled, Arise, My Soul, Arise, that turned into a hymn by Charles Wesley. Arise, my soul, arise, shake off thy guilty fears, the bleeding sacrifice in my behalf appears. Before the throne my surety stands, my name is written on his hands. He ever lives above for me to intercede. His all-redeeming love, his precious blood to plead. His blood atone for all our race and sprinkles now the throne of grace. Five bleeding wounds he bears received on Calvary. They pour effectual prayers. They strongly plead for me. Forgive him, O oh, forgive they cry, nor let that ransom sinner die. The Father hears him pray, his dear anointed one. He cannot turn away the presence of his Son. His spirit answers to the blood and tells me I am born of God. My God is reconciled, his pardoning voice I hear. He owns me for his child, I can no longer fear. With confidence I now draw nigh, and Father, Abba, Father, I cry. Ladies and gentlemen, by the grace of God, our prayer motivator verse from the Word of God today is Second Chronicles 33, 10-13, which reads, And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken, wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns and bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed unto him and he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share with you some important points regarding this verse, rather this passage from Matthew Henry's commentary. We notice from this passage that Manasseh humbled himself greatly before him, was truly sorry for his sins, 
ashamed of them and afraid of the wrath of God. It becomes sinners to humble themselves before the face of that God whom they have offended. It becomes sufferers to humble themselves under the hand of that God who corrects them. Amen, somebody. And to accept the punishment of their iniquity. Our hearts should be humbled under humbling providences. Then we accommodate ourselves to them and answer God's end in them. We will discuss this passage further in our next broadcast if the Lord should tarry his coming. My personal encouragement to you today is 16 ways to pray for other people. Realize, number one, the person's present exalted position in Christ. Number two, present the person as a living sacrifice. Number three, ask that the person be filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, what I uh, share uh, with people is that they ask Lord, ask the Lord rather to empty them of themselves, uh, to crucify their flesh, to die daily to self, and then ask the Lord to fill you with His Holy Spirit. And then I'll do one more today and I'll share the rest with you, uh, Lord willing, on tomorrow. Number four, ask that God will guide the person to become regular and systematic in the reading and study of God's Word. Our prayer motivator quote today is from Alexander Strauch. He said, do not tell people you will pray for them and then fail to do it. That is hypocritical love. Genuine love takes the promises of prayer to heart and follows through in keeping those promises. Somebody ought to say amen right there. Ladies and gentlemen, our prayer motivator devotional today is part 15 of our series titled, why fasting and prayer is important. Uh, from that Prince of Prayer, Dr. John R. Rice. Fasting and prayer often leads to victory over sin. The world has many Christians who have trusted Christ, who sincerely love him, who are going to heaven. Yet Christians who have no daily victory over sin at all. Everywhere I go, I find Christians who say they cannot quit cigarettes. They cannot control their tempers. They have trouble in surrendering even enough to give God regularly the tithe. Christians find it hard to forgive one another and are constantly falling under the temptation of Satan. Is there victory for such Christians? The answer is yes. There is, but sometimes it is found only in the time of fasting and prayer, waiting on God and laying aside every weight, amen, every duty, every pleasure that might interfere with our wholehearted prayers. Many times I have seen things happen in protracted seasons of prayer that would not happen in the ordinary course of events. Now, dear friend, it is time for us to actually, actually pray. That's right, we don't just talk about prayer. We pray. In fact, we fast and pray by the grace of God. Please remember that if uh, the Lord would lead you to send in a prayer request, the announcer will provide the information for you to send in your prayer request at the end of this broadcast. We uh, have a prayer team that prays 24 hours a day. We don't just lay 
our hand on a stack of names and pray for you. We pray for you by name specifically. Every time we pray for you, sometimes we pray for you even twice a day. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and we will not uh, cease. Uh, we will not uh, uh, stop. We will never cease praying for you until you tell us to stop. And so, uh, please feel free to send in your prayer requests if the Lord will so lead you. Holy Father God, we pray in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your love, and your grace. And Lord, we praise you and we thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for your Holy Word, and for all of the many and manifold blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We individually confess our sins, our faults, and our failures unto you. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of all of our sins. Lord, revive us again. Those of us who are fasting during this time, Lord, I pray that you give us your grace and strength to do that. And Holy Father God, we pray that you would continue to bless, lead, guide, and direct all of your pastors, church leaders, and missionaries around the world who stand for you and who are truly helping people. We pray also for over three million people to come to know you as Savior. We pray, Lord, for the revival of your church, and we pray for the healing of this nation. Lord, we pray also that you would save and give leadership and wisdom and guidance and direction to the president and all governmental officials, as many of them are confused and going in the wrong direction. We pray for not only our leaders in this country, but leaders all around the world, as we are now so uh, interconnected. Now, Lord, we pray for three people who have sent in prayer requests to our ministry here at Gospel Light Society. Lord, we pray for Cheryl in Harvest, Alabama. Please heal her mother, Marlene, Lord, we pray for John and Esther in India. Bless their ministry and have them to reach many souls for you. Now, Lord, we pray for Alan and draw him closer to you. Lord, bless and save his family as well. Holy Father God, we pray now for the following people who have recently trusted you as Savior. They have received you into their hearts, and we thank you, Lord, so much for saving them. Thank you for allowing us to be a small part of your great work here on earth. We pray, Lord, that you would confirm them in the faith and have them to grow in the faith to become the spirit-filled Christians that you want them to be. Help us to do our part in discipling them as best we can and help us to help them to find a good Bible-believing church in their area. We pray specifically for Rodney in Florida, Miriam in Paraguay, and Jose as well. Now, Lord, we pray for the following people who have been saved for a while, but who have recommitted their lives to you. We rejoice with them in this decision and pray that they will keep their commitments to you and be strengthened in the faith. We pray specifically, Lord, for Leslie in Pennsylvania. Diu now in Haiti and Nataka in Haiti. We pray for these in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we commit their souls into thine hand. And uh, Lord, we pray that you'll bless them real good today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you are listening today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, your first prayer needs to be what we call the sinner's prayer. Please understand that you are a sinner 
and that uh, as I am, and that you have broken God's laws as I have as well. We all have. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Please understand that because of your sins, you deserve punishment in a place called hell. Yes, there is a real hell. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. This is both physical death and spiritual death in hell. But here is the good news. Uh, what I just told you was the bad news. Here is the gospel, the good news. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you are willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, please pray with me this simple prayer. Holy Father God, I realize that I am a sinner and that I have done some bad things in my life. I have broken your laws. I am sorry for my sins for Jesus Christ's sake. Please forgive me of my sins. I now believe with all of my heart that Jesus Christ died for me, was buried, and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul and change my life today and forever. Amen. Dear friend, if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you, was buried and rose again, may I be the first to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, go to GospelLightSociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Until next time, my beloved, remember, dear friend, pray, thank, do. God bless you.